Howdy y'all. How are we all doing today? I am doing great. Doing great. Feeling good. Feeling good. Uh, I'm going to try not to speak as, as loud. Uh, I'm trying something a little new. Something different. Uh, I have my headset on. My uh, wireless headset. So, I'm hoping it all goes good. And I get my shirt unbuttoned so it don't rub. Um, like I said, I'm going to try it. See how it turns out. And if it turns out well, I might be using this mic for a little bit until I order a road mic from uh, Mr. Nick Pixel. But anyway, <laughs> hey, can't, can't hear there. Drive me nuts. <laughs> So, speaking of Mr. Nick Pixel, uh, we are starting on his saw today. I, I did start on it a little bit, so forgive me, I got a little zealous and went all gun ho on this. So, uh, what I ended up doing is I removed the carburetor. Both side covers, all the linkages and all that, put them all in a little baggie, marked them, because the carb has already been rebuilt. The saw was running. Not very good, but it was running. I believe the carb has been, I believe the carb was rebuilt. I believe so. So, well, there's my, Mr. Nick Pixel now. <laughs> Talk to him now to see him about ordering that mic. So, as you can see, I have a lot already done. Got the uh, covers all done. Took the front cover off the oiler. That way I can get to the bolt underneath here so we can remove this whole top section. Should, should be able to. Okay, now, I know there was an issue before, I already seen it, was with the oiler, the tube, or the rod, I'm sorry, the rod for the oiler, for the manual button, is, um, there was an issue with it. And it was leaking out of the top here. So I may have to go in and uh, put some new O-rings in there, whatever it needs done. So we can uh, stop that from leaking. Uh, under here, um, I did notice there seemed like there was an air leak. Um, from the carb body or the in between here from the carb to the cylinder uh, and I could see it was leaking yes it was definitely leaking and I, I and I can tell you right off the bat why when this when they painted this on the line they painted where this meeting surface goes into the, the to the gasket to the uh, cylinder okay typically you want that clean you want that super smooth I don't like to paint these surfaces uh, when I'm powder coating I still I, I'm covering that so the powder is not on that surface I like that nice and smooth and clean very important uh, so it's a little dirty here so that's going to take some cleaning. We might put it in the wash tank, get it all cleaned up. And we got some, a uh, little bit of rubber material here and there, but that's not a big deal. So, yeah, I'm going to end up taking this pin out for the trigger. We're going to 
strip all that out. Everything's going to come out of this because this is going to be redone. It's going to be powder coated. And I see they have a tag in here that's been riveted in. I'm not going to mess with that. Sometimes I'll take these out and put new rivets in when I go to put it back all together. But I don't see an issue doing this since I am already taking this, cleaning this up. I'm going to leave that bare, get that covered up. I'm going to cover this up as well. Uh, when you're powder coating, they have a uh, heat resistant tape. So we're going to be able to put tape this off and put it in the oven. <clears throat> we're going that that that's a I'll show you how to do all that. That's definitely won't be an issue. See, and then they also they painted on the inside of where the intake here on the inside. Um, again, you don't want to paint that because you can see here. I'll try and see see if that cover the light. See how some of the paint's missing and all that. Yeah, that's going right into your cylinder. Yeah, really not a good idea. Really not a good idea. So, we're going to go ahead and set this top part off to the side. Uh, I'll set it down here. Okay. And this shield here, cylinder cover, that come right off. Definitely needs to be cleaned up. And it does need to be reshaped. Uh, some of the, this is just sheet metal. Okay, very flimsy. I can see it's been tweaked a little bit over the years, which is pretty normal. No big deal. Uh, me being a body guy and a fabricator, I do a lot of sheet work. So, that shouldn't be an issue. We'll get it shaped back into. In its uh, original form, especially when you go to put it back all together. Okay, that's all going to be blasted, cleaned up, and blasted. Have some little rubber O rings here. I guess they're not really O rings, like uh, rubber gaskets, just for cushion in between the bodies. So, I'm going to go ahead and pop those off. And I can make some new ones out of rubber material. Excuse me. <clears throat> pop came back up. <laughs> um, so, those can be remade. Not a big deal. We also had a leak in the cover of the oiler. Okay. So that gasket's pretty wor worn out. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and make a new one of those as well. I find it easier and cheaper for myself to make th these parts. Right, make these gaskets. Especially when they're not critical. Now if it's, if it's a gasket for between the body and the cylinder... Uh, yeah, I will uh, order the original uh, gasket material because they have a spe specific size sometimes. So that's not a big deal. But here, this isn't so bad. So, yep. Rest here. I do want to see. I'm trying to take a little bit of a look at the cylinder. Or the... Uh, wall skirt here from the, the piston. It don't look too bad. It looks alright. Not bad at all. Trying to take a look down in the hole here. Trying to look at our transfers. Alright, so I cannot stress enough. And I can see a little bit of the accent that, um, exhaust port here. I can't stress enough it, how important it is 
to get your oil fuel mixture correct. Okay. This saw, thankfully it's nothing terribly bad so far, but it has a lot of carbon buildup around the exhaust port. So I can't stress enough, you have to get your fuel oil mixture correct as close as possible. So, surprisingly here, I um, I didn't take out the spark plug, which is uh, kind of weird for me because that's usually the first thing I do so you can spin everything uh, freely. Uh, I believe that's a 5 eighths. Should be. Yep. And my ratchet is over here by the ATV. get that back to the customer but I have some parts I had to order for the ATVs but anyway I'm gonna get this whoa that's in there pretty good wow whoa that's uh I didn't think I put that in there that tight so I know I was the last one to do that so I know I had this running pretty good or decent before. Spark plug is nice and brown. Right where I want it. So the carb, I did rebuild the carb. The carb was adjusted pretty good. Alright. So, next off. That is definitely smaller. Next off, we need to get this flywheel off. Trying to get this all disassembled here for y'all, and, and I can go through all the cleaning and blasting and whatnot. Oh, let's see here. I believe that is nine sixteenths. Hope you're all doing well today. Been kind of a laid back, lazy day. I had to do some running around today. Uh, but other than that, been pretty lazy. Kick back. Spend a little time with the kids. Alright. So. Did I, uh, I think I've shown you all a little trick on how to get these flywheels off, right? If you do not have a puller, or don't want to break out the puller, which is my case, I uh, can be a little lazy sometimes. Uh, let's see. Sometimes you can get away with just a hammer. Sometimes you get away with a hammer and punch. I'll grab punch out just in case. It don't look like I get the uh, hammer in there without damaging these fins. So, little trick here. There is a key slot. That little slot that's in there. Now, the key holds it all in and it's pressed on. What you could do from the opposite of that key slot, so the key slot's facing this way, on the opposite side, on the far side, take your punch or your hammer, and you can give it a little tap, and that will pop loose. Now, make sure you turn the magnet away from the coil, but one little tap, but you have to do it on the opposite side of that key slot, okay? This flywheel is actually pretty clean, not too bad. But... So, that's a little trick, if you all don't know that. Okay, and then in here, I have broken this cover to the points. 
so I'd probably get a new one just to keep the stuff out of that. But yeah, I did break that. It was pretty brittle. As I pulled it off, it it broke on me. Alright, we're gonna get all this off. I'm gonna get all this bag and tag. Sorry, I'm uh, in the way, aren't I? So this this cover is actually snapped on there pretty well, and that's obviously how I how I broke it. Okay. So we have the points in here. Now, we're not going to use these points. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're not going to use these points. I'm going to keep everything here in case the the uh, electronic ignition uh, module doesn't work. Or if you don't want to use that, you can always switch over back to the points. So, pretty important to keep uh, that stuff uh, laying around. Not necessarily, but or necessary, but it's always good to have it on around. So, that's a part. Do need to start bagging and tagging everything. Biggest thing is keep organized and keep your, your parts all together. Okay, so I've got my little, my smaller screwdriver here. A hammer. Now we got three bolts so it connects the um, muffler on there. Okay, and they have a tab, a plate on here, which the tabs are bent over. We have to straighten those tabs out so we get those bolts loose. So a little bit of screwdriver and precision tapping and get those laid out flat. Don't want to hammer too hard, you don't want to put a dent or a hole in your muffler. That's never a good thing. Okay, those are flat. And I need to organize my table again. I did have it all. Oh, excuse me, I did have it all organized. I believe those are three eighths. Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. I had a little bit of an interruption there. I go take care of garbage and all that and close up the chickens before I forgot. Just dawned on me. <laughs> Alright, so. Well, I'm kind of running out of space here. Okay, back down here. So we're working on the muffler. Gotta get this off. I already ordered some parts. I ordered a lot of parts, actually, for this. Uh, the mail's still a little on the screwy side. So, I'm still waiting on those parts. Alright, I have my whole bag. My bag of bags over there. I keep my little ba Ziploc baggies for everything. I like to keep everything organized. That way I'm not confused. Is when uh, how things go back together. Look like somebody's already been into this. Yep, a lot of carbon just dropped into the cylinder, so we gotta make sure we don't uh, we don't turn that. So you can see a lot of carbon build up even on the outside. Not not, uh, not a good thing. Gotta make sure you have your oil fuel mixture correctly yeah somebody painted this muffler don't look like they painted anything else just the muffler and then put a aftermarket homemade gasket on here not the correct correct gasket but that's okay we'll get it fixed up it runs really well. Like I said, the spark plug 
is nice and brown, so I'm not too concerned about that. All right, so now we got all that off. <clears throat> we can go ahead, we can take this off, which I did break it loose, which I do, don't think I have the tool for this, come think about it. Yeah, I do not have the tool for this. I have some clutch tools, and I can grab the one, and we can see if it fits. Oops, specialty drawer, specialty drawer, there it is. Oh, I had to get a new toolbox. And they were on sale, I had a good deal on toolboxes. I had to get a nice big toolbox. Oh, nice grenade pixel again. Yep, that's not going to work. That's definitely not going to work. Not, not wide enough. That's okay. Um, there's other ways of uh, getting this off. Uh, we can make our own tool. Uh, for me, I'm going to be doing a lot of McCulloch's because I have a ton of McCulloch's to go through. And I can order a new clutch tool. Removal tool. Okay, so we're not going to worry about that right now. Unless it's loose. I don't think it's loose. I don't want to spin it too much because a bunch of carbon dropped down into the cylinder there. Um, luckily, the piston was at top dead. Up, anyway. Alright, I did order some crank seals for this, because I know we can't take those out very well without damaging everything, <laughs> damaging them, <laughs> so I did order those. My main thing I want to get into is the oiler, the manual oiler setup here. As well as, yeah, no, that's the main thing I really wanted to get into and look at the cylinder. Um, but again, like I said, it, it did run very well when I took it apart after I rebuilt the carb. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take this coil off. Want to lose our washers here? Okay, that was the ground. We can go ahead and disconnect it from the body here. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the wires off the post of. So I'm going to leave the condenser on. That can stay attached. No big deal. I just want to separate the the wire, the ground wire, or the sending wire that comes from the points to the to the coil. I already have a bag here set up for uh, the points. So we need. Screwdriver, you want to make sure you fit, get your screwdriver that fits all the, the screw heads just right. You don't want too loose or too tight because you're going to strip them out. Guaranteed. I already know you're going to strip them out. Very easy to do. Trust me, I've been there and done that. Learned my lesson several times. All right. Driver here it has a little magnet. All right, that's all detached. So that will pull off. Well, I gotta pull off our uh, our little condenser as well. So I left that all together. And like I said, we might not be using this stuff 
later on. But I like to keep it all together. I like to keep things original as possible. I love old stuff, and I love to keep the old stuff old. Even though it's oops, getting a, a new finish to it and whatnot, I like to keep the old stuff there with it. All right, we got that pulled up. Got our little felt gasket that goes back behind there. So it looks like our crank seal was leaking a little bit, which is pretty expected for an older saw. That's why I ordered it, not only because I'm doing a rebuild, total rebuild on it, but these old saws, they tend to wear out like that, especially these iconic 1010s. Everybody loves the 1010s. Who doesn't, you know? Need another baggie here for... Um, a big one. Yeah, that'll do. So yeah, like, I keep my bags from everything. Big, big old bag of bags here. All right, so we're going to get this outside. We're going to clean this off. Three-eighths here for a post. Oop, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Three-eighths. This video, I apologize, might be a little on the longer side. Uh, but I like to get the whole disassemble on one. At least the disassembly. Yeah, see, that's all dirty, gunked up. Lots of material on there. We'll get it all cleaned up, though. We also have curb body or a spacer here. And gaskets. We'll just throw those used gaskets on the on the floor there. You know, we might have to do a part two because there is still a lot to. Um, where my screwdriver go? Oh yeah, I dropped it. Uh, there's still a lot to go through on this. What we could do is a part two, final disassembly and inspection. So, with that all said, folks, there we go. With all that said, we got a pretty good start onto it for our disassembly. So we are going to cut it here. <laughs> so here's part one of disassembly of the Pixel Mac. We'll call this the Pixel Mac of the iconic 1010 automatic. All right. So I hope you all have a good night, evening, morning, whatever it is in your part of the world. I'll see you all in the next video. Y'all be good, be safe, be kind. Please spread the love. See ya.